Well, welcome to Informatica. In many European languages, the word Informatica means the science of information processing. And in many cases, information is what it's all about. And in theoretical physics, there is a theory called the holographic universe, where every single particle, subatomic particle that we are made of, that our universe is made of, is actually a projection off a big globe that our universe is in. And what we are is simply a holographic projection of information. In other words, we're not real, the information is real, and the information changes. Coming down to reality that we live in, uh, my world comes from the world of art, neurology, and neurobiology, and that's what my contribution to this joint uh, installation is. Uh, Peter Gray's world is from genetics and molecular genetics, and his contribution comes from uh, DNA structures. And we have a combined installation called Informatica here at the Lubeznik Art Center. My work is on the walls and on the ceilings. It consists of 1,500 thought fragments. We have over 800 uh, square feet of wall space and 400 square feet of, of ceiling space uh, used on this installation. Peter's work here is in the center, the spiral structure, reminiscent of uh, DNA uh, spirals and the DNA patterns opening up for expression of genetic information. The overlying purpose of my artwork is an investigation where consciousness comes from. Uh, we have uh, 100 billion neurons in our heads that are interconnected. And it is from that massive interconnection of fibers and neurons that a, a new property appears, uh, consciousness, our thinking, our self-awareness, uh, and from that philosophy, theology comes from. How does that happen? That's what I'm investigating here in the world of art. In the current exhibit, there are thought fragments, and each piece consists of previous artwork that I did, and these fragments include my own memories in the form of previous artwork that's been transformed and colorized, uh, neuronal patterns, my own brain scans, my own electroencephalograms, thinking about different topics, artistic topics, and including emergent words and word fragments, thoughts emerging from, from the layers within each piece. The interconnection uh, between the neurons that produces uh, the emergence of self-awareness and consciousness. For this particular exhibit, uh, what we use as inspiration are drawings of the human cerebral cortex done by Santiago Ramon y Cajal, a Spanish neuropathologist, uh, more than 100 years ago. He's the first person who was able to define the structure of neurons, and because of his contribution to medicine and neurology, he received the Nobel Prize for that work in 1912. The particular neurons that we're looking at here, and this is one of the classic patterns of it, is called the cajal retzius cell. And it is very important in the development of the cerebral cortex, not just in humans, but in all mammals. Um, this is the cell that's the first one that's produced, or very early produced in, in fetal life before birth. It migrates and it produces wide horizontal fibers. Subsequent neurons then, when they're born and they travel up to where they're supposed to be interconnected, these cells organize that. They organize where the cells, other cells go to and then where their interconnections take place. So they're the primary organizing factors in our central nervous system, actually. This one pattern here is a more of a classical one with the wide horizontal projections. The other neuronal patterns that we have on the walls in back of me, uh, those are slight variations on the theme, artistic variations. And in all cases, we have these horizontal interconnections to them and showing that the migration takes place within the development of the cerebral cortex, the migration is up on the ceiling itself. In doing the installation piece itself, we're dealing with live cells, neurons. They're interconnected, they work, they do information processing, um, they're key to our memories, to ourselves, our recollections. In doing the actual pieces themselves, we wanted to also have some liveliness to them, have some motion, nothing static at all, not, not like a pathology specimen from a textbook. And that's why we put in movement in the pieces. And you see them as sort of dancing neurons here, which I really wanted to have. I did the installation first. And Peter Gray then, uh, a, a few days later, came in and put in the spiral piece here. Complement is amazing. The energy of the movement of the spiral in the center 
is picked up by the neurons and in their movement patterns. And the entire exhibit installation becomes one of motion, one of dance, uh, one of liveliness. We're so thrilled to have this wonderful artwork here in the Robert Saxton and the Brinka Cross Gallery. This is the first time that we've had the opportunity to meld medical science along with art in one of our exhibits here at the center. It's interesting, a few days ago I had an individual who came up and they looked at the work and as I started to explain what it was, they knew instantly, even without my explanation. They saw the lines that were going through here and said these have to be brain scans or something that has to do with some kind of scanning process in the medical field. And it looks so wonderful in this art background. So we're just real excited to have this opportunity to show that kind of work in a way that's never been shown before here at the Lobesnik Center for the Arts. This is a piece of my mind. Uh, it's a sequence of uh, a piece of similar to what's in the um, Informatica installation. Uh, previous artwork that was um, recycled, uh, dry mounted onto board and then cut into these little thought fragments. Uh, the, in this particular sequence is 140 pieces. Um, each of them is signed and numbered on the back. And uh, the pattern that was here is my outline of my own brain, a, a sort of self-portrait of my brain. And the purpose of this thing is that whoever comes to the exhibit uh, can take a piece for free as a souvenir. So the majority of my brain has already disappeared during the opening on January 14th. Eventually, I will become mindless. I'm Janet Black, the Education Director at Lubeznik Center for the Arts, and uh, we're thrilled to have this exhibit because I give tours to hundreds of school children uh, for the different exhibits, and it's nice to be able to show the kids that um, being an artist and a scientist are not mutually exclusive experiences in life. Um, they inform each other, and uh, these exhibits are vibrant and fun. I think that when they walk up the stairs to see this, they will be delighted the way that I was. Over the past uh, 30, 35 years, I've had uh, more than 30 personal solo exhibits, participated in over 80 uh, group shows. Uh, my artwork is represented in museums and private collections internationally. And in the Chicago metropolitan area, on permanent display, there are pieces at the uh, Rockefeller Memorial Chapel, at the Illinois Institute of Technology, uh, the Biological Sciences Division building, uh, the Donnelly Building at the University of Chicago, and uh, a suite of pieces uh, decorate one of the conference rooms in the Blackstone Hotel in downtown Chicago.